All right, Mal here, Dad's Garage, and today is an exciting day because today we're getting a lift. Uh, or a hoist, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I've always wanted to get a lift or a hoist in, that, in my uh, workshop or in my space, So, and today's the day, fantastic. So this video is going to be on the installation of the, the lift or the hoist. Uh, now there's a couple of ways you can do the install. Um, you can uh, do it yourself, or indeed, the other option of course for uh, installing a lift is getting someone in. So I've got this guy. So Nathan's uh, come along, he's going to help us, and, well he's not going to help us, he's going to do the install, so we'll film that. Here she is, this is how it turns up, so he's got the crane and everything on the back of the trailer. Now, this thing's pretty heavy, so... The weigh about 750 kilos. 750 kilos? Oh right, yeah. yeah. That's one of the reasons I'm by myself, so to get that, well, in here and up is not going to be easy. So, mate, well, if you don't mind, we'll just, uh, just watch you and, and keep an eye on how you do this and we'll go from there. Too easy. Thanks, buddy. So I decided uh, that I'm going to get uh, a professional to install this lift. So, um, one, it's time and uh, I'm by myself. So I was just chatting to Nathan about um, you know, how much this thing weighs and how difficult it is and to do it for you, yourself, um, it's not that difficult, uh, but most, but certainly the thing is heavy, um, and having lifting gear and, and someone to help would be uh, really beneficial. So here we go. We're getting a hoist, finally. So if you're um, considering installing it yourself, what's some of the critical things that you think you need to? Um definitely need some sort of way to lift the platforms off yeah so whether that be some people have diggers at home with bucket, uh, bucket all right yep. attachments they can use um, otherwise normally this is sitting quite high on my trailer but if you pick yep. it up on a car trailer you can you might be able to get an engine crane in there yep and actually pick up the platforms off that yep. engine crane is probably the most popular way people install yep. this yep. by themselves so. cool yeah it's just a bit of a bit of a cheaper way than, or you can, if you have the facilities, you can hire a floor. Yep. That's probably the safe, if, if someone has, if someone's in an industrial place like this and you don't mind spending the money, hiring a forklift would probably be the best way. To do yeah. It, so. Well, the other way is get this guy. <laughs> that is the way I'd recommend it. That's the recommended way. That's yep. the way. <laughs> So this is how she all comes packed up and uh, nice and neat. So, you're gonna be heavy. Some people don't do that and then take the hoist up and then they have to bleed all the air out of it. All right. I just did this just to, so that when the ram is all the way shut, so yep. you fill it now, yep. there'll be nothing but oil. All right. There might be a little bit of air left in the hose, which we still have to get yep. at the end, but it's not the massive volume of air yep. in which you would do, in which what would happen if um, you didn't do that. So the little things you do now will be uh, help you later. Yeah, pretty much. See, I thought you were balancing it up and just... No, no, no. no. I'm, uh, in the air. I don't know if you could hear it, but you could hear the air. Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay, so that's a good little tip. Bleed all the air out. It'll save you time later.
Yeah. Simple for packing only. Oh, yeah. So they will just get strapped. And you've just taken the weight of it because obviously it's yeah. going to. Well, <laughs> it, it is supported on here. Yeah. Um, by underneath here by this little metal. Oh, yeah. Yep. But um, yeah, I, I just like to support it just in case. Just because, absolutely. Yeah. One of those things, rather be safe and sorry. They pack these things in quite well because they, you have to get 36 of them into a 40 foot container. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, just pick off piece by piece. Everything, the only thing that you can't lift by hand yep. is this platform and that platform. Right. Everything else you can lift by hand. Right, okay. So it's just those two big, yeah. the actual drive on platforms. Yeah. Yeah, so Nathan was just saying the best thing to do if you are installing it yourself is uh, just leave it on the, the car trailer and uh, start picking off, you know, one part at a time. Because it's heavy. I'm just saying the, uh, these, the ramps here are, the, are uh, upside down, so you need to flip them, which could get difficult during the, during the process if you're doing it by yourself. And that's just so you can store everything inside for transport, so. But with the crane, no problems. All right, yes. Now I can see why he's got this strapped on here. Basically, just uh, taking off that top platform and then taking off the uh, support bars at the end, and uh, start picking from the from the package. Nathan was saying this is all the the motor etc. She comes all pre-wired, everything ready to go. Um, with the tough lifts, basically everything comes with it. So we've got the uh, drip trays come with it. We've got the caster kit over there that comes with it. Um, we've got the ramps come with it. Plug, everything ready to go. So you don't have to worry about getting an electrician in. A lot faster, a lot safer. And there's good instructions that come with the, the lifts to yeah, help so there's assembly. There's an installation manual. Yep. She's pretty step by step. Yeah, yeah, it's just step by step. So, but um, there are a few other videos out there of people actually installing the hoist. Yep. So, um, it's because some people prefer to actually physically see the process. Yeah. Some people aren't very good with reading instructions and yep. bits and pieces. So. I mean, I'm probably that way myself, to be honest. Like, yeah. I prefer to see how it all goes. How it, how it happens. Yeah, so, but the instructions are quite, 
Uh, good enough that anyone should be able to understand it quite easily. Yeah. Looks like an important part of it's getting yourself just nice and organized and well, everything in a place and in place for everything. Yeah, well, if you just start throwing everything everywhere, then yeah. you kind of get a bit lost about where everything is, so. Yeah. Yep. So these are what your locks dive into to actually hold the hoist up. Yep. And they're doing that at all four corners to... Yeah. Yeah, all four corners. So this lock has um, two safeties. The safeties that you control and then automatic safeties. Yep. So the safeties that are automatic are on the cables. So all if right. anything were to happen to the cables, yep. um, they dive in and catch it. Okay. So, yeah, these, these hoists are very safe. This was missing out of here. Yep. They would go and take it out of a hoist that's currently in stock. Yep. Just to make sure. Make sure you're up and going. Yeah. And then they'll just order another one in. And um, yeah, no, they're, they're really good like that stuff. Yeah. I think uh, support on the ground in Australia is really important. Yeah. So. Uh, the tough lift give you good support on ground and have all spare parts available and. Yeah. I think that's a really important part of the decision process is yeah. having support. Yeah. And also there's a lot of techs out there like me or my dad or, or a lot of other guys that can um, uh, can come out and help you if you have any issues. Or, yeah. Or if, um, even, we even do site inspections for people that don't yep. necessarily know if a hoist is gonna fit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Easy peasy. Yeah. Yep. Just the way I want to do it. Alright, so this is where we got to flip it. So this is uh, maybe a little bit more of the, the difficult part if we are doing this at home. Two people, engine crane, a bit of patience and time, should be right. That only took that only took four takes. <laughs> that first go. 
done. This is where this crane comes in handy. This actually has to be spun around too. All oh, right. It's just the way it's ended up being packed and the way that we've orientated the hoist. Yeah. So. so much easier. Now watch out for the crawler, I just polished the aerial.
these uh, obviously are the main lifting cables. Yep. Um, they run through a pulley that goes underneath here, goes up through this pulley, yep. and then comes around. And this is the automatic safeties that are on your cables. Oh yeah. So if the safety normally, this is currently sitting on the locks at the moment. Yep. But when this is up, that lock pulls back and it's straight. Yes. If any tension comes off it, that wheel goes forward and dives the lock. Right. In. So that's what essentially is your automatic safety. So you've got your manual, as you said, that locks it in, and then this is the automatic safety so as well. The, um, the manual is the one that you control with a lever. Yep. Um, and the automatic safeties are always ready to go. Yep. So. Makes sense. Yes. Simple but effective. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, yep. So it actually keeps the pulley, uh, the cable on the pulley. So it just goes underneath here. And it, it doesn't really screw onto anything as such, so I put some Loctite on it so it stays there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it could vibrate out over many, many years, but yep. just a little bit faster. Yep. Some people do these cable nuts slightly different. They um, they actually put one nut above and one nut below on the top hat, but um, we choose to do it like this because um, it means the cables can spin freely yep. up there and they don't unwind for whatever reason. So yep. you tend to get a little bit more life out of your cables. So there's more grease nipples? Yeah, more grease nipples. There'll be, um, there'll be nine in this hoist in total. All right. As simple as that? Simple, simple. Go. Yeah, so a few little tricks on doing it, but relatively easy. Okay. So that will just go take that bung out there yep so. all right so any any oil that it just does get bypassed on the ram there just goes back into the yep. back fed back into the tank yeah, some of them don't have that they just have a, just a generic breather mm -hmm. and then you'll get the oil that will drip out of the um, out of the tank most cool. installers will pour this into a uh, use a funnel to pour it into that yeah the hole is quite small <laughs> And it does take a significant amount of time. So I have- You're a little battery powered pump, is it? Yep, a little battery oh. powered pump and- uh, Good idea. So, and one of the other things these guys supply is all the oil. Safety. Oh, yep. And um, so this, it's a big rod that connects to a handle down that end. Yep. And then a T, like a, a rod that runs across here with like a little T piece. Yep. Um, and yeah, so these rods have to be fed in from either end. Go in there, you break it.
So you can imagine if you've backed this up against the wall and you've got to this point, yeah, yeah. and you've gone, oh. <laughs> you've got to allow plenty of room at each end to feed that through. Yeah. So and you just pull down like that. Oh yeah. There's a linking bar that links to that side and over to that side. Yep. So when you pull it down, it pulls that that one out and that one out. Yep. That, that's what lets you control the um, locks. Cool. So what's happening now is I've um, because I pulled those cables out to begin with to yep. close the ram up. Um, the cables had a lot more length. Yep. So what's happening now is the ram's filling up with oil and those cables are now catching it to where it should be. Yep. So. Cool. Going through and putting all the little linking rods together. Yep. Which obviously connect all the safeties. And they're all, um, they're all adjustable eyelets as well. So you can adjust them to suit. Oh yeah, for length and that, yep. So. so that one will go down like that. See how it's too long? Yep. So I can then just shorten it up a bit. And you want that vertical, do you? That yeah, so you um, want it to be essentially as straight as you possibly can get it. If I take that up, you watch that wheel will move in. See how it kind of move back towards and yep. release it a bit more relaxed. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that lock then dives in and catches it if anything was to happen. Excellent. It just makes it very um, easy to work on and it's less reliant on electronics or hydraulics. Yep. It's a lot like old school cars, essentially. So yeah, this, and then when I pull that lever, that moves like that. Yep. So that's what unlocks your locks. Very cool. Pretty exciting to be honest. Uh, he's uh, got pretty much the the hoist mostly set up now. Just doing some fine tuning on, on the you know all the, the safety mechanisms etc. Um, just tightening up some of the the nuts and bolts just to make it all nice and firm. So uh, it is running, which is very cool. I must say a bit exciting. Uh, it is in. Looks like it also fits in really really well. Um, and it's going to really be a, yeah an asset to Dad's garage. So tough lift. Absolutely, so far, recommend the installation process, sale process, uh, the um, communication has been fantastic. And um, yeah, the installation, um, great. You know, not that I want to do it by myself, but certainly if I had a helper, I don't think it'd be too much of a problem at all uh, with, a, um, with an engine crane, etc. So, right, let's see if we can get this finished. Well, I say us and then Nathan, basically. Alright, so this is the first full lift. So the 
motor just then essentially just you, you could hear. I don't know if you could hear it, but yeah. I'll do it again so you can hear it. Um, when the motor, it sounds like it's struggling a little bit, but yep. it's just essentially gotten to the furthest point it can lift. Yep. So I'll do it for a little bit longer than you should so you can hear it. But yep. yeah, that, that's yep. essentially at the point. I probably would never do it to that extent. That's probably a bit excessive. You can always just go up and then just, and just do that. So I, I can hear it just for, for a second. And then, and then you just lower it onto the locks. And that is your highest locking point. All right, so it doesn't go click when it locks it? Uh, no, so what you can see is, um, so see how this handle moves? Yep. That handle when it straightens up, essentially is it going into the lock? And right. I'm, I'm also currently, my hand is still on the lever, yep. and you can actually see the cables are starting to get slightly loose. Yep. Because all the tension, like the, like you could take this ram out and take the cables out, it's gonna sit there. For yep. Till the building falls down. Is there any other parts that you check to make sure it's all locked in? Uh, no, no. So, I mean, you can physically go in here and inspect all of these, mm -hmm. but the best indication to tell that they're all in lock is yep. that they're all locked level. Yep. So if one lock wasn't working, you'd get it where it essentially will lean a little bit. Yep. So, but I can tell from the fact that it lowered onto all of the locks evenly and directly. Yep. It didn't, you know, like sag one side or go a bit lopsided. Yep. All the locks are engaged. So. Cool. All right, so that was our first lift in the tough lift. And plenty of height. I got the extra high one because yeah. obviously of my you know, stature. Um, I don't want to hit my head being the taller type person. My son's six foot two and a half, so I don't care if he hits his head. Oh, that's great. Look, oh, that's fantastic. The way that these locks work is essentially they don't directly go in and out, they mm -hmm. kind of swing in and out, yep. so you actually have to go up off the locks. Yep. So probably the best way to tell if you've gone up high enough is you wait until this stops. So if you go up, it'll go up, it'll move, and it'll stop. Yep. So that's probably just enough for you to do. So that handle down and yep. then the other handle down. It's just a safety thing to make sure you've gone high enough, because some people tr only go up for not even half a second, and some of the locks might not have come out yet. Yep. So. Oh, that's awesome. And then it's also the same when you're putting it on the lock. So if you want to put it on the lock, you can wait till you hear it click. Yep. And wait till that handle stops. Yep. And all that means is what's happened is it's it's dropped in here, you've gone clunk. Yep. And when the handle is moving, that's it going like this. And when it stops, that it's traveling up there. Right. So what you're doing is when you're waiting for that handle to stop, you've, you've almost gone up to the second lock and you've made sure that you're definitely ready and then you go back down onto that lock. Yep. It's just a it's just a safer way to operate the hoist. You can because um, like you can do it immediately after you hear the bang. Mm -hmm. But then you know if you park the car too far back and maybe that lock's got a too, like the cable's got a bit too much weight and it's mm -hmm. leaning a bit one way, um, it, that lock might be last by could even be half a second. Yep. But it makes a big difference. So then to get it off, take it off, wait till the handle stops, and just pull that down, and then just get down. Perfect. The good thing about the, the tough lift, you get the uh, tool holder jacking plate, plus you get all the drip trays, all included. Oh, and the stops. Oh, is the best way to do it, so. There you casters. Oh, okay, very big, yeah. yeah. There's two boxes, each box will come with um, two wheel kits. And Excellent. There's your pins that you use to lock them into the posts. Yep. And then the actual frame itself. Simple. Is that you assemble the wheel? Yep. Goes around here, and you get this. Like that. Put the arc hook in. That's it. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. And then it uses the, the weight lift. of the hoist yep. to come down and push this down. Yep. Which in turn lifts that foot off the ground. Yep. And, and then you can just it, it puts it, all the weight on the wheel. Yeah, it only lifts it off the ground maybe an inch, inch and a half. That's all you need. That's all you need. Just wheel it around. Yeah, excellent. Simple, effective. <clears throat> so these are the uh, grease nipples that come with your hoist. Um, there'll be four, one on each corner. Yep. And then there'll be another two 
on this side underneath those pulleys and two underneath that one and then one which is at the very head of the ram here oh yeah so use a fitting like that which just couples onto your grease gun so clip that on and then you just push that in Sometimes some scissor lifts have got. Afternoon test back, Evan speaking. So basically, the weight of the whole unit pushes the wheels down. Just to move it yeah, where yeah. you need to go. Alright, so you need to get me on a post? Yeah, normally I'd recommend corner to corner. Uh, yeah, jump over that corner would be good. That that probably has gone a bit too far on that side. But um, I'll kick these around. It's just the casters are uh, once they spin they're good, they just keep a little bit to get going. But I don't want to be close. I can be close. Push out until you use your shovel. Now the way. I've, I don't know if you see this, but all the pins are facing inwards. Right. The reason I've just gotten a habit of doing that is because um, if you push this up against the wall or you push that up against the wall or whatever, it's always easier to get these out this way. Yep. And so you don't lose them, I put um, the pin So we got the HT on there. We're gonna have a look from the side. Fits like a glove. Like a glove. All right, so going up, she's just one button.
and locked in. Locked and loaded with the HT. We got the oil trays under there because she needs oil trays. We got the lift. That's perfect. Have an look under here. Yep, there's oil. At least you know you got some, hey? When she's leaking. It's pretty clean, old bus. Nice. Well done, Nathan. So that's uh, in its highest lock point. Um, that's pretty much where I would always leave the car. Yeah. Um, when it's on that lock point, it's it basically can't be removed unless you take it up and take it off the locks. It yep. won't fall off the locks, nothing can happen. Um, you just gotta make sure your car's always in gear, handbrake on, with yep. the shocks on. And then putting those end stoppers on either end also helps significantly. That's fantastic, mate. So, that okay. is going to be so helpful. Absolutely fantastic. Finally, got a hoist. Well done. All right. So uh, thanks for uh, coming on Dad's Garage, mate, and installing the, uh, the the lift for us. Uh, so what was the name of your business again, sorry? Uh, True Lift. True Lift, right. Yeah. So yeah, Nathan from True Lift. Um, and uh, thanks very much, Tough Lift, for uh, uh, helping out with the supply of this fantastic lift. Um, did a great job. Really appreciate it, buddy. So thanks very much, mate. Too easy, thanks. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the new lift installed. So um, Tough Lift. Absolutely um, ecstatic with how it went. Uh, install went so well. Thanks so much again, Nathan, for that. Uh, the sales process uh, was fantastic. The guys were really reactive. Uh, got me quotes really quickly. From quote through to install, three weeks, which is fantastic. Numbers, so, but uh, check out the website and get a quote from the guys that actually really good value and then look at all the accessories that you get that you're probably gonna wanna add anyway. Um, and even down to the plug and lead, like some don't, get a plug and lead so you have to get uh, legally have to get an electrician to wire that up and that could be 150 bucks or something so um, yeah everything's included that you need services there people on the other end of the phone it's Australian owned company it's been around for many many years reviews are great websites easy to uh, manage and maneuver really fast reactivity um, back to all the questions I had so I can't and obviously you saw Nathan today the installer um, absolutely fantastic uh, help so yeah I looked at the location, the support I'm going to get, uh, two post versus four post. I looked at the features that I wanted, the approvals that were in process, and then I looked at the value for money. All of them pointed at buying the tough lift, which was fantastic. Then, now I've got it, and I've only had it for a day or two, uh, it's fantastic. Like, it, it goes, I think it went down in 40 seconds, something like that. Maybe be quicker, I'll time it and put it on the video. Uh, it also went up in about a minute, 55 seconds or something. And that's actually pretty good um, to get a car down. Um, I have seen some other lifts and they were yeah, over a minute um, in both ways, pretty honest. So uh, this was pretty good. Um, so all up, really happy. These guys are fantastic. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit more video um, on the on the Tough Lift, all some of the features and benefits, etc. But uh, yeah, Dad's Garage, thanks very much Tough Lift for uh, helping us out to with this lift. It's going to be well used and um, yeah, well appreciated in the future. So thanks again. Make sure you subscribe, like Dad's Garage. Let's see how, let's time how long it takes to, get, to go down and get back up. And back. Let's go.